uh, reconvene to open session at this time and um, note that uh, all directors are present uh, for the meeting and there was no reportable action out of closed session. Um, but before we move formally into the rest of the agenda, I suggest and I would like to have a moment of silence for the passing of a director um, who had a long tenure on this board and that's Fred McPherson. So if there's no objection in from the public, I'd like to give us a minute, okay, to contemplate uh, and think of Fred's uh, contributions over the years. So, please. Thank you. And for the two people who just came in, we've had a moment of silence of one minute for Fred McPherson, the passing of a director. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody here. Um, so we will move on to tonight's agenda. Um, are there any additions or deletions to open session agenda? I'd like to make a change in the order of um, items. 10 I and J and move those to the beginning of, uh, of uh, new business uh, due to the fact that we have uh, consultants from out of town here for presentations. Okay. Any objection from any of the board members? Okay. Um, do we need to? Oh, okay. okay. Uh, we will do that. Um, but first, we will um, take oral communications from the public on any item. Um, that's not on tonight's agenda. Ms. Norton. Um, yes, I um, had asked uh, the, both the board and, um, and Mr. Manager Rogers if um, I could possibly prepare the agenda um, for the next Laddock um, meeting. And I understand that it's, it's, you know, that it's something that you'd like to take care of. But, and I just would appreciate it if I understand you'll be presenting the, I'm hoping, charter because it'll be a great tool for the, the committee to review and use as a starting point but um, I would really appreciate it if it could be published as quickly as possible the agenda since we, it's the 27th is the date of the Lada meeting so we could have an opportunity to study it and be prepared to discuss it. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, yeah, Lydia Hammock, Juan Pico. Um, I had a question about Laddock as well. Um, I understand there's another opening, and was something going to be done about that at the, the next regular board meeting, or was it going to be advertised? I saw it was, but only on the Juan Pico page, again, not on the main page. Okay. Um, I'm not sure that's something Nothing that... Nothing you can answer, just wanted to bring right. it up. But we'll take it under consideration as to when to do that. We have not moved ahead on advertising. Okay. It's in this packet, the letter of resignation. Right. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Anybody else? I'm no. Nancy Macy from Boulder Creek. Um, I wanted to thank the board for co-sponsor or the district uh, with the board's support uh, to for co-sponsoring the 19th annual environmental town hall. That's this Saturday <coughs> from 1 to 3 at Felton Community Hall. And there will be over 20 other organizations, nonprofits, uh, county agencies, uh, schools that will have exhibits there. And so we encourage everybody to come no later than 1 because there will be about 20 minutes or so where they'll have a chance to peruse those wonderful exhibits. and. Um, then Mark Stone will be giving a presentation 
which will basically cover the environmental issues at the state level uh, or things going on or potentially coming that will affect us here locally. And then there'll be a Q&A with Mark and then we'll close and there'll be another opportunity to uh, visit the exhibit. So it's gonna be very exciting. I really appreciate the incredible support that we've had and um, especially from Jen for her help. Um, and then I want to thank the departing board members in, from the bottom of my heart for the extraordinary job they've done. And sorry to see them go. Thank you. Anybody? Ms. Henry? I have a question about the bill pay or accounts payable, as you would. The bills are listed in the packet. They're in the agenda packet, but they aren't listed on the agenda. And I'm wondering if I want to ask a question about those, when can I ask a question? Because the only other place I could see would be finance, and it says if you want to ask a question there, you have to submit something ahead of time. So. Okay, thank you. I, I think we can provide a response to that. Um, you, you can't tell me? No, why? I said we can. Okay. Um, okay. And um, those are under district reports, and at the time, that's the conventional time in which uh, they're in one of the district reports, okay. so that's the standard place to bring up okay. an item, you know, a question about that. Um, anybody else? Okay. I don't see anybody else um, want to comment during oral communications. So um, we have one item of unfinished business this evening, and that's the public hearing for the Bear Creek Estates Wastewater Enterprise Proposition 218. And I um, haven't handled one of these myself, so I um, either uh, Rick, and I think I don't know at which point we have a. I could take oral communications before and then open a public hearing. Um, okay, Rick. Um, so, uh, were, were you asking about the procedure, or yeah. were you wanting Rick to uh, introduce the item? I thought you were going to say that, <coughs> uh, but I can deliver the item. Yeah. Okay, go, go ahead. Um, as you know, we've been working with uh, the Fair Creek Estates uh, wastewater customers on um, fixing uh, the wastewater rates and charges. Uh, we've met with the, the homeowners several times talk with them about uh, improvements that are needed and a rate increase that are needed for the Bear Creek uh, Waterworks. Uh, we did move um, ahead with a, a Prop 218, um, which, which is back to this uh, public hearing it is for tonight. Um, I do believe uh, the District Secretary has uh, calculated the amount of protests that we've received to date. And we plan on uh, asking to receive protests if anybody has brought one to the meeting tonight. Uh, and then move forward. I mean, we want to add to that. Uh, just a suggestion that if, if you want to give the board an opportunity to comment before opening the public hearing, uh, that would be appropriate. Or you could simply open the public hearing and listen to the public first. Um, I recommend um, reminding the public about whatever time limits you intend to set for purposes of the public hearing when you open the hearing. For individual comments during the public hearing? That's right. And would those be separate from, if we took public comments before, if the board had a discussion, we took public comments before the hearing, would we need to take comments again during the, the hearing? Uh, the, the hearing itself is the public comment, comment period for that. So once you open the hearing, that'll be the public comment period, and when you close it, public comments will be over. Okay. Um, so, um, any board members want to? Yeah. Okay. I've, I've been involved in this both as a director and also as a member of the Budget and Finance Committee, and I just want to commend Stephanie on her work getting this second round um, to the really, I think, much improved state that it is now working with a number of their neighbors up in Bear Creek Estates. I think that seems like a really successful process, and um, 
I really appreciate your involvement with that as well as the, the residents up there. I think it's something that we really had to get done and I think this is hopefully a, a really good compromise. Um, so I think that was a great way to approach it. I really appreciate sort of your, your extra attention to that. Um, any other board members? No, I, I can wait till the hearing. Okay. Um, I mean, I, I kind of would like to second Jean's uh, thoughts on this. I wanna also want to thank the people from Bear Creek Estates, okay, for engaging, okay, with us in a productive manner. I think I, I haven't been part of the Budget and Finance Committee and been directly involved in this, but I'm um, really proud of the way that both sides in this handled themselves, and I think we've gotten to a point that. Um, We'll make progress on this okay matter and um, get to getting on with the next phase of it. Um, so, um, if there's no more board comments, um, time to open the public. Okay, and is there any official manner in which that's done? <laughs> that we, say, okay. So at this point, uh, we will open the public hearing for the Bear Creek um, uh, wastewater um, enterprise proposition 218. So. Um, at this point, we see if there's any in additional uh, protests that are collected. Or is Those can be provided at any time to the district secretary while the public hearing is open. Once the public hearing closes, no more will be accepted. Okay. So we don't have to provide a specific opportunity to that um, as long as anybody knows. If you have one, make sure how it gets it before the public hearing is closed. Okay. And this is the point. Well, and I'm I'm Holly. If you don't know who I am. <laughs> so this process is to hear the public input during this process, have time, okay, to submit a, okay, a protest during this process, and then close that hearing, and then come back and look at the results of the, of what the protest the vote or protest process uh, resulted in, and make a determination. So, uh, at this point, um, I'll open this up to public comment um, during the hearing. Would anybody like to comment? Uh, this is McKibben. <laughs> Lynn McKibben from Boulder Creek, and I live in Bear Creek Estates, and uh, worked on the last protest um, with the neighbors and worked with the group um, that put together all the input from the neighbors, uh, which I really appreciated um, your listening to and incorporating into your plan. Uh, and I want to thank you for that because. Uh, that made a big impact on um, uh, being listened to by the board and um, having that incorporated in there. And I wanted to uh, thank Bill Smallman for meeting with us and um, setting forth a really feasible plan, um, giving us a lot of hope that it could be fixed or it could be dumped or whatever we got hope for. <laughs> so uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Would anybody else like to comment during the hearing? I don't see anybody. So close the hearing at this point. Okay, the hearing, uh, we'll consider the um, hearing closed at this point. And um, are we at a point that we know the results of the process? Yes, sir. Um, we have not received enough um, protests to have this Prop 218 stopped, so it will go through. Okay, very well. Um, so at this point... Do you need the numbers of protests received or to analyze? Well, if we're below, I believe the number is around... 26. Yeah, yeah. or less. So we don't need to validate them. So if, if it were close, we would have to go through each one and make a determination as to whether it was valid, but below 26. Should we state the number that we did receive? Oh, sure, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Uh, we yeah. received five protests. Okay. Okay. Um, so with that, uh, we now need to address a resolution, okay? Um, okay, that appears in our packet tonight. Um, is there any board discussion about this at this point? I just reaffirm that I, I would, you know, move approval of Resolution 12, 18, 19. I think it's an excellent compromise, and um, it gets us going in the right direction. 
Okay. Um, a second. Okay. Um, comment? Um, again, I just want to say I appreciate the uh, this process and the maturity with which it's been handled during, okay, that we got through this. Um, I hope that that uh, holds for the next phase in which we get capital done, okay, with the district gets it done. So um, I will then call for a roll call vote, okay, um, on resolution number 12 of 1819. Director Hayes? Yes. Director Smallman? Aye. Director Ratcliffe? Yes. President Bachman? Yes. Director Bruce? Yes. The motion is passed. Very well. Thank you all very much. So um, let's move on to new business and let's move up as we uh, just discussed item um, J. Okay. Oh, oh, I need to be first. Is that right? Okay. Move up I first. Okay. So move up I to the beginning. And I is. Um, the debt policy, and it's buried a little bit in my stack of papers. Okay, and um, I'll allow, okay, uh, if you would, okay, introduce this item. Uh, so in going through kind of this process, which is the first for me since I've been here of getting a large debt financing, um, came to our attention that the district did not have a prior debt management policy that is considered best practices with the GFOA, um, and also something that investors are looking for us to have, you know, that it is something that we do need to have in place. Uh, Nossiman is a firm heavily involved in all this type of, this type of stuff. Um, they have draft documents of stuff like this, you know, firms like themselves and others um, prepare kind of a, a template policy that they can then tailor to fit your uh, exact needs. Uh, so this has been, you know, reviewed by, by Nossiman as well to be a, an effective debt management policy. Um, it goes over a lot of different things for the different types of investments that the district can enter into um, kind of the policies behind the different players in it. You know, you have underwriters, you have bond council, there's a lot of different moving targets of the varieties of debt that the district could go out for. Um, this is something that, you know, we should consider to look at from time to time. You know, it does have certain things in place for, um, you know, debt coverage ratios and stuff like that. So, you know, through the audit, we are going to be looking to make sure that we're in compliance with that and whatnot. Um, and so this is kind of something that should have been done a, a while ago, but, you know, this is a good policy that the district should have. If there's any questions, we can... Um, two quick questions. One, did this, did this go through the finance committee? Yes, we saw okay. this, and I had just a couple of questions because some of this was new language to me, um, but I, I wasn't concerned with the fundamentals, just the details of the language, um, especially some of the debt refunding and some of that language was new. Some of it is you yeah. know, a little bit more foreign to me. We do have Catherine from Nossum in here as well, so if there are any specific questions to the debt policy, you know, she should be able to answer some of those. Okay. I had one other small one um, about, uh, there was, um, on page 156 of the document, and I'm trying to figure out what, where this was, I, something jumped out at me about, um, you shall consult the district's municipal advisor or um, other kinds of advice sought, and I thought, well, why wouldn't we also ask you, as the district's financial director, your advice as well, or should that not I mean, be these, here? You're talking about people that have certain licenses to be able to give actual legal you know, advice about this particular yes. issue. Yes. Okay. So that's where I mean, it, it's kind of a partnership. It is one of those things that we want to make sure that we're reaching out to licensed professionals to get to get good opinions Got that it. are the best for us. Got it. Okay. Anybody else? Um, not to open it up to public comment. Um, anybody from the public want to comment on this item? 
I don't see any, so I'll close out public comment on it, uh, bring it back. Um, I have no more further comments. Anybody like to make a motion? Uh, there is a yeah, there is a resolution yeah. involved. Number 14, 18, 19. 14, 18, 19. 14. So we can move it yeah. after. There must ah, be a there we go. Somewhere okay. in there. <laughs> <laughs> Out of order. It makes sense. Okay. Well, I would I would move approval of resolution 14 of 1819, which is the debt um, management policy. Second. Okay. Further discussion. Okay. Seeing none. Um, Holly, could you okay. have a roll call vote? It's a favorite <laughs> Director Hayes? Yes. Director Smallman? Aye. Director Ratcliffe? Yes. President Boffman? Yes. Director Bruce? Yes. Okay. Motion passes. That's it. Motion passes. Okay. On to Jay. So now um, let's move on to what needed to be, uh, for which this, the thing for which this needed to be uh, approved. So. <laughs> um, and I'll bring this back again to Stephanie, I believe is the correct person. Yes, so uh, the agenda item was the authorization for execution and delivery of documents relating to the sale of certificates of participation and related actions. Um, over the course of the last couple weeks, the capital markets and rates have been, been fluctuating. Um, while the original idea was to be moving forward with these certificates of participation, we do believe that we have been able to find uh, private placement that is going to potentially be offering the district uh, a, better, a better option, um, not to mention the level of intensity that certificates of participation entail. So while this was the original item that we were hoping to kind of move forward with, uh, our recommendation has changed to where we do not recommend moving forward with this option at this time. We plan to have uh, more final documents at the 1120. We are having a special board meeting on 1128 for the audit. Uh, we are proposing to move an item to there for the, more of the final debt financing. And this is all relating around the $2 million uh, financing that we're looking for related to probation. Okay. Um, please. When you're talking about sort of the fluctuating or volatile finance market, is there a chance that this window will close before then, or is, is so it not that that so volatile? That's kind of where all of this starts to play in. So the capital markets is obviously going to be a moving thing. You're not going to know what your locked-in rate is until you actually go to the public for for the offering of the certificate of deposit. Um, you know, when we first started talking about this was the very end of August. Um, in between then, the feds have raised the rates. Uh, the market has been a little bit more volatile. Um, the private placement is going to be more something someone can assimilate to a home loan to where we are able to get a fixed rate with someone to where we can move forward, to where this is going to continue to fluctuate until we mm -hmm. are eventually able to, to be there. So that is part of what we are liking right now is the fact that we can lock in a rate um, and we know what that is and have something hopefully final by you know the, the 28th of, of this month um, versus something getting drug out a little bit longer there has been talks that the feds are going to be potentially raising the rates here again in the next few weeks. Oh. We kind of want to make sure that we're getting into something before that. Um, and we do have Chris and Catherine here who, if you know, people have questions that are probably over my head for mm -hmm. the exact details, um, they can answer some of those, those questions tonight if there are any. My follow-up question is really mm -hmm. simple. If, if there, you know, if, if this is able to be brought back on the 28th. What's the time until execution is possible? It would be the sort of thing if we approved it, it could be put into place immediately? Yeah, so the start of the legwork that we've already done has been working on um, the installment purchase contract. Jump in if I'm using yeah. wrong terms. It will be, so with the documents that you've looked at already, 
for the private placement deal, there will be far fewer documents that need to be signed. It's a much simpler <coughs> So that's called installment purchase contract mm -hmm. that's in the packet. Yeah. We will have a document very similar to that, and you'll sign that with a, directly with the bank who's going to be lending mm -hmm. you the money. Once you guys approve, hopefully, fingers crossed, on the 28th, the financing, we can get the deal closed and get cash to Stephanie. We could do it in a week. It's going to depend on the bank and what they require, but no later than two weeks mm -hmm. after that point. So by the first, second week in December, Stephanie will have the money and can move forward. And so now, just for example, like, what would the certificate? What would the path be if we continue on the certificate? Of if we did, if we continued with the COPs, we would need still need to come back on the 28th with another big document that until you guys decide what to do we just stop to work on but a big disclosure document that would go out to all the investors and we'd work with Stephanie to gather a lot of different data points about the district and all different rates and water usage and all this data that we have to share with the investors so that'll take a little bit of time we bring that document back for you guys to approve on the 28th and then we would go lock in the, the rates after you know pretty shortly after that meeting and it could take two or three weeks beyond the meeting to get the money. So we could mm -hmm. still get the money by the end of the year, but it would take several weeks longer, and we don't have the certainty of having the rate lock, mm -hmm. whereas we could lock the rate very shortly for the private placement deal and not have to worry about the uh, the markets and the fluctuations. We, we have a, we Do you guys want to introduce yourselves? Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thursday, I am a, a partner at Nassiman, and I work actually out of the San Francisco office. And I'm, I'm strictly a bond council public finance attorney. Been doing yeah. that for about ten years. Uh, municipal capital markets group. Uh, we're a public finance underwriter, and we do capital markets and bank placements. So we straddle both. So through this process, we were looking at um, we saw a 45 basis point increase in the long end of the yield curve, which are 15 years to the 30 years, gone up a half percent in the last few weeks, yeah, which sure. is significant. It's pretty flat up until <laughs> until a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And when that happened, it, it made that long end of the in, investment hard to justify from a, from a structural standpoint. So, um, and before before I had proposed my offer, I'd actually spoken with to try to straddle both markets to see capital markets, banks, uh, which one is more viable. And back then, capital markets was by far a better option, but now that has changed, um, and so that's sort of where we're at today. But. Okay. Um, other board comment on this? Um, public. Um, yeah, uh, I'm curious. You're talking about private um, options. Is this a local bank or is it a um, national bank or I mean? A national bank. A national bank. Okay. Yeah. So and, and it's not, you know, Felton, you know, first, you know, <laughs> care, yeah. whatever, you know. No, well, like they usually, yeah, yeah. 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 Local yeah. banks have a harder time on a lot of uh, lock in rates for longer periods right, of time. Right, so you right. want to have someone who's got enough of the balance sheet to hold it for a longer period of time. Okay. And they did lock in the rate today through the end of December. Mm -hmm. So if that's a direction, mm -hmm. you know, the okay. board decides to go, uh, we're, we've saved till then. Mm -hmm. What rate do they lock in? Well, we're at we're at a, about a, a four and an eight, so yeah, okay. it's four point one five. Okay. Any other public comment? Um, Ms. Norton. Um, I, I uh, Tony Norton from Felton. I'm just curious: is the are, um, is this the same company that you were using before? That Correct. So they will be M MCM. We will be partnering with for this two million dollar the $6.5 million bridge next year and the $1 million Long Pico loan as well. And so part of that is, I mean, there's a lot of front end work in getting some of these initial documents that then are going to make those other those other pieces um, easier. Hmm. Right. One of the things we do as a company, I, I focus on working with rural development, the USDA programs all over the country. So that came to the fruition because of the, the $6.5 million project. And then Steffi had mentioned there was these other smaller ones, and because of the work involved, heavy lifting involved to, to access usually the better money, on the long, um, you know, we looked at this $2 million project, and so then it just turned out that it wasn't viable 
because of the size, it's a smaller issue, so mm -hmm. it's just more expensive to do it mm -hmm. as a capital markets transaction. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, that, I mean, two million is very small. I mean, most of the deals that you're talking about that they're using, taking the capital markets is $15 million plus wow. deals. So, I mean, having these smaller things is a intricate piece of the pie. It's nice that MCM looks to help rural, you know, more rural, smaller agencies find some of these different options and figuring out ways to leverage and make it affordable so that we're not having to go to some of the local banks that are, they really would, I mean, it costs an arm and a leg sometimes to get stuff like this. Okay. Other public comment? I don't see any other hands up, so we'll close out public comment and come back here um, and let you have a recommendation. Okay. I don't know what, I mean. Yeah, at this point, there's um, there's nothing for the board to approve because the staff recommendation changed, so right. there's no action the board can take tonight. Okay. So you, it will be on the 1128 agenda. So anyone interested in this, the audit and this will be will be at least two items on that agenda. Okay. So just a question on, on the two million. Are you going to do an early call on that, okay. or do you you going to let that run the term? Do you know? There's a, at this point. Or? There's a call feature at ten years, so it's a twenty year fixed term, and okay. then it's callable at ten years at par. Okay. So I mean, all of it's going to depend. I mean. Right. I'm not going to sit here and guess what position we're going to be in 10 yeah. years to be able to, if we're going to be able to, to do something like that. I mean, obviously, if we're ever able to. Well, the, to the idea with the larger one is to call it at the time the USDA loan kicks in, right? With the 6.5. Yeah. That's going to be a totally different. The bridge right. loan, that's going to be a different set, a different setup than what this is. This is okay. intended to be a true longer term financing. Yeah. That's that was what I was yeah. thinking. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And so, the slogan is for the probation tank that yeah. is in construction as we speak. Good. Okay. Yeah. All right. Good. Good. All right. Thank, Thank you guys pictures. for coming. Yeah. Thank you. You, don't, you don't have to stay for the... Nice to meet everybody. Good Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for watching out for us. Well, maybe it's less smoky here. Yeah. 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 Got my mask. Oh, geez, you have to drive through the smoke. Oh, yeah. Well, it's bad. Yeah. Yeah. It's really bad. Yeah. It's really bad. Yeah. Today was like the worst day that we've had. Oh, my God. Well, my yeah. brother was driving yeah. over the bridge, Golden Gate, and said you couldn't even see the color of the smoke. <coughs> yeah. yeah. 213 well, particular. Nice to meet you all. Bye bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Good night. Hope you enjoyed it. Yeah, really. Only. Okay. Okay. So, um, Let's return to our uh, previously scheduled agenda order and, and bring item 10A um, uh, to the forefront, and that's the engineering department reorganization. So, Rick, this is certainly your. Yes, you know, over the years, the district's had a lot of different variations of an engineering department. We've had district engineers, we've had managing engineers, associate staff, and now, now to the current single staff position, the uh, GIS staff position. On the 2018-19 fiscal budget, the board approved a new position, a uh, project coordinator position. That position was going to coordinate uh, the vast amount of capital improvement projects, um, FICO projects, and the projects we have going on today, um, and utilized consulting engineers um, to do um, plan specifications and a lot of the generalized uh, engineering. Um, we haven't filled that position today. We've done interviews. Um, we decided that uh, with the change of district managers that I'd like to rather go in a different direction um, and go back to the engineering manager and a um, uh, engineering manager assistant or a, 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 an engineering assistant uh, that can support uh, the engineering manager and bring a lot of the consultant engineering back into the district um, instead of relying on consultants and just a project manager to carry on with their work. Uh, the district, with its large capital improvement projects, the expansions that we've had, the, the modeling of the system and the different um, projects that we've got going on, we need an in-house engineer. There's a lot of day-to-day -day engineering that I've been covering, that uh, the deputy director's been covering 
meter services, fire reviews, a lot of day-to-day -day stuff. I mean, we've been subbing a lot of that out as well. Um, so what I'd like to, to propose moving forward with my reclassification from Director of Operations to uh, District Manager, um, we're going to um, most likely move ahead and fill in the Director of Operations with a Deputy Director um, position, which is James, which that position was created I think, about four or five years ago for as a transition, just for the transition when I was to retire, so we'd have a, a smooth transition. So we've been training and coming up to speed um, to make that transition and make that transition and then no longer fill the deputy director position. So that'll free up a, a large amount of salary. Then move forward with uh, the reorganization of hiring a, uh, an engineering manager and then a, uh, uh, an engineering assistant. I mean, looking at when you take the you know, current budgeted through budgeted salaries and you look at uh, um, the non-filled positions, it's about an increase of about $2,200 a year. It's very small an increase to get a, uh, an in-house engineer and a really um, move the engineering department forward. Um, so I, I'd like the board to uh, to move ahead and approve uh, a district engineer position, um, and we'll, or a, a managing engineer position, engineering manager, and move forward with filling said position as soon as possible. Um, it'll definitely take a lot of workload off of me and uh, the, the director of operations. Um, you know, we're doing a lot of the day-to-day -day stuff um, that uh, we need to get done. Okay. Just for our edification, what are some of the qualifications or how would you describe the, the, the position qualifications for the engineering manager? In, in, in a way, just to help You'd be a registered professional engineer. Okay. The position would be a, uh, a registered professional engineer that could sign plans. Okay. Um, so it would be a, it'd be a management employee. Okay. Um, that's for sure. So, and it would be one that we would look. Um, Engineers are in great demand right now. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of the, the consultant firms are having problems finding engineers and, and people, so it, it, it may be a little, take a short while to find the right person. We want someone that has you know, several years in waterworks experience and, and what we're doing here. Um, I don't want an electrical engineer, I want a mechanical engineer that has underground engineering construction experience. Um, they could hit the ground running. Is there someone you know that you could steal? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll go to public in, soon. Well, okay. that was my concern. Is I know even a couple of years when we were looking for an electrician, it was, you know, it's been hard to fill positions because the cost of living in this area and competitive job market and so forth. So that was one of my concerns. It depends on the positions. We've been out just recently for a couple other positions, and we've seen to get a better recruitment okay. pool to move through. You know, the, 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 an engineering manager is, is going to be a difficult one to follow. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we could steal. We, we, we can uh, <laughs> send out. Hey, folks, steal. Are, it's folks have stolen from uh, us. I mean, yeah. we, we've been stolen <laughs> from us. So. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's yeah. Yeah. Private, I, private construction and the district is a little different because the district offers a benefit package. Mm -hmm. It has medical, and where some of these private firms probably don't have mm -hmm. the, the benefits that the district has. Mm -hmm. So, you know. So we'll just, we'll just find the right one. So I like the idea of having sort of some of the the burden taken off of you and, and other people who have more high level duties. Um, so I like the idea of the day to day stuff being taken care of by somebody else. Um, my concern is, you know, if the capital projects um, become too much, obviously we can still rely on consultants at some point. We will not you know, be able to do away with consultants 100%. There will still be plans and specifications, or things, but there's a lot of coordination, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of background work that uh, an in-house engineer will do. Mm -hmm. And plus, all the other things we're working on, we're trying to model our water mm -hmm. system, um, we're working on our GIS, our CAD systems, and then trying to get our mapping up that, you know, we need to support staff for our GIS um, mm -hmm. as well. Um, we're also looking, one of the tasks we'll task this individual with is putting together some numbers on a pipeline replacement. 
an in-house pipeline replacement. Mm -hmm. The city of that would be a, uh, a beneficial to the district, cost affordable beneficial mm -hmm. to, to start replacing pipe with in-house groups. Mm -hmm. I know there's work to be done to, to do that, and um, that it's another perfect project for yeah. a, a district. Well, that's great because, you know, that's something that's been kicked around for a few years. We yeah. just haven't had the, the time or money to time focus money, on it. And there's right. some concerns on that, I want to get off, um, off track, but we've got to be, make sure that we can keep staff busy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You right. know, rainfall's a concern when you're laying pipe because you can't really lay pipe in the rain. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work out too well. So we want to be sure whatever we do, and that's what this, uh, another, um, another uh, task of this this individual will do um, and to look ahead. And there's a host of work to look into our power consumption of our pumps, our motors, um, to do the engineering background to make sure we're, we're our, fish, our efficiencies and our, um, our proper, and we're not just wasting money mm -hmm. on burning energy. Needs to, needs to be looked at. I'd apply for the job if I wasn't stuck with this one. <laughs> 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 One of the things, I mean, from a financial aspect, I mean, it is essentially a wash. It, you know, it's a, it's a reorganization. Um, it also has a great deal of potential to save on consulting costs. Yeah, so you sort of studied, like, how much you would we would save. Um, we started to look at that a little bit. I think, it, yeah. I, I mean, there's definitely, I didn't want to throw a number out, but I I, I consider anywhere from fifty to 100000 the first year. Sure. Once we start... Got no. inspection. We got you know work going on out in the field. Um, I think there's some considerable savings. But we kind of have that WSC kind of already set state. But they're not the, locked but in. But they're more and you know, they would you know that would replace WSC on some the of the day. some of their stuff. Yeah, some of the stuff. Yeah. You know, the the USDA projects they're putting out plans and specifications. <laughs> it wouldn't, but this individual would work closely with them and lower that cost but because they'd be doing that work. But, but I think well. with the separate pipeline crew and stuff like that and just being okay. able to do all the engineering yeah. in the yeah. long run, it's going to be a big win. Wouldn't yeah. be more efficient. I think it's a very healthy yeah. reorganization. Yeah. Yeah. We've had engineering departments before in the past and it, they worked out great. It just seemed that when the engineer left, we just never replaced it. It was just a way to cut mm -hmm. costs at the time. Mm -hmm. And we didn't have a, a robust capital improvement going, uh, program going in the last few years. but. I don't see any daylight, and I don't want to see any daylight on capital improvements. I mean, I see us moving ahead on a, a very aggressive capital improvement program. Great point. Yeah, I'm very much in favor of doing this. this. Or structure, it's very good to me. I mean, we need to have this expertise in house. I agree. So. I even have a candidate in mind. Ooh. Okay. Oh. Ooh. So let's first go to. The, let me first uh, ask for public input on this. Anybody from the public want to comment on this item? Um, I saw Mr. Ferris. Okay, first. So, Lou. Reading Rick's memo on the justification for the reorganization, several questions came to mind. One is, in looking at the text, you talk about adding two headcounts and not replacing one headcount. But then in the salary chart, you talk about adding two headcounts and deleting two headcounts. I'm not clear. Now, you had some reclassifications, so that made it a little confusing, but to me it wasn't clear how many adds and how many subtractions you have. It's just a question. You don't have to answer well, it. Well, yeah, we can answer it. You want to go ahead and answer it? Sure. The project quarter position yeah. is a budget, is, was an approved budget position, so while we physically don't have that person hired yet, that's the headcount that we would, and then the deputy director going away, so it's essentially um, one. We'll, we'll one, be, one what? One. We'll be hiring two, two we'll, we'll, we'll be bringing two people on, but one of them is already funded. The, the project well, not will, here. No, not yeah. here, but it has. it is in the budget, it's funded. But this, that's still two ads. That's, from in a sense, on a numbers count, it, it would, is two people. That's well, correct. one ad and one transition. We would not, yeah. we would not yeah. backfill the deputy director. Yeah. Right. right. By eliminating the deputy director, that we, if we didn't, then that'd be three, and then that would be a healthy uh, increase in the budget. We feel that the, the, now that the transition is done at this point in time, we don't need the deputy director position. So in short, there was to be one ad, and now there's going to be that basically that same one ad with the project coordinator becoming the engineering, okay, replaced with the engineering tech position. Yes, sir. And then the engineering manager position is filled with the, um, the non-filling of the right. deputy dire uh, right. director. And the difference of those two salaries. Right, is 2200 or something. That's correct. 
right? So, any other um, public? Okay. Second question. Oh. You referenced that where we are now is based on a staffing study done in 2016 by an outside firm. And what you're proposing is more capital intensive as, as a justification. But it strikes me that that's really more of a description of the change and not a justification. For example, you say that you're going to save outside consulting costs. How much are you going to save? I don't have that number for you. Well, you don't you need to know number. that? To, to just to justify what you're going to do. I know it's going to be. I know for the, for the public and for the board, I should have had that number. Okay. Um, I agree with you. Particularly since the 2,200 you were quoting yeah. is based on. I, That's based on direct salaries. Yeah, but it's based on the average of direct salaries. As I look at the range, is huge. So the error on that 2,200 could be immense. Is the only point I'm trying to make. Yeah, there is a little high. That's my point. And where did you pick to get that 2200? I, I assumed it was I the mid. It looked like it was the mid. Anyway, the, the number, we yeah. need to have more concrete numbers, I think, and not just we're going to save money. I, I should have put a, put a line on an estimated consultant savings. Right. Second part of that question is why is the new better than the old? I mean, concrete specifics. I mean, you've, you've got a description of we want to head off in this direction. Well, you know, give give me the details of why this is better than that. It's it's not clear to me that I mean that may be the right direction, but that it's not a convincing argument. And then the last part is what are the downsides? I don't see any reference to downsides. Are there no downsides? Have you thought about the downsides and the minimal? I, I mean, I'd like to see some discussion of. I'm sure if we thought about it long enough, we could find a downside. But I think the downsides are are so minimal that I, I don't I don't see a downside to bringing. Uh, a certified or a registered professional engineer in the district. My point is just this. Your plan is to do one thing. And I don't see the, the, the argument pro and con to doing that one thing. I just see doing that one thing. And I think you need more information in that regard. Okay. Thank you, Louis. Well, um, we had some back and forth. Do I, I was did I get my three I minutes? Was I don't know. <laughs> Keep it stopping. All right. Um, Ms. Mason. Well, I got so wrapped up in that, I kind of lost what I was going to say, but um, um, I think there are several savings involved, and one is that uh, Rick will be able to focus on his job instead of on managing the uh, consultants, and that will enable him to finish more of the tasks, and um, having an in-house person, uh, I think he gives you, the board, and uh, uh, Rick more control over than he would have over the consultants. So it, it seems really wise <laughs> to get someone inside. Okay. Have our own person. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Norton. I agree. I, I think that consultants are, are just um, a problem with all corporations today that they, ha they don't have the jobs in-house they don't have, like you said, as much control, and those costs just seem to skyrocket. They just keep going higher and higher. So I, I think it's a great, great move for the SLB. Okay, thank you. Ms. Hammer? I, I concur. <laughs> this is very good to get in-house, yes. And I saw. I think that an um, in-house uh, person will make the district more responsive mm -hmm. to its customers instead okay. of having to wait for a consultant to um, have time to do whatever it is that you like. You have somebody that you can send out immediately and it'll be better customer service for everyone. Okay. Ms. Shaw? Yes, um, I agree having an in-house in engineer. I mean, it's just much easier for back and forth or questions or change of plan. Um, it just seems to me the um, efficiency and desirability. You know, I mean, it'll get the job done the way we want it. Thank you. Ms. Henry? I think having an in-house engineer has a, been a long time coming. It should have been done long before this. Okay. Thank you. Sir? Virgil from Brooklyn. Um, I think a lot of what people say about having the in-house engineers is really a good thing. <coughs> One question that is bothersome is, of course, you know, how can you 
justify the in-house versus the consultant and you know you've got to balance that and so you're you know you're you're, you're swinging the pendulum back a little bit which is probably a good thing but that's still speculation are we going to have anything in place to try and measure the benefits that we've received from this over periods of time and not next week not the week after but three years down the road are you going to be able to look at something and say yes this was this was handled much better and we saved this amount of money because we did do this in November of 2018 you, you, you if you don't have the data it's all speculation we I can answer that. It was, I mean, we would we would do cost accounting on this position. So if they're working specific hours on a capitalizable project, specifically a project that's capitalizable, we they would be getting specifically tracked and extracted and capitalized, and that plus whatever premium of profit you want to put on what you think an outside consultant would have been charging you would be a more concrete number down the road that we can identify. Plus, you we should be able to measure a reduction in the consulting hours. No, no, you're right. saying we will be able to. We will be able to. We will. Well, it's, it's not you easy, will be able to. It's yeah. not an easy number to come out. We can That's come a, up with some I numbers, agree. but I agree yeah. with you. It, it's because you've got to also be able to put a value on your staff time and on, on my oh, staff sure. time on that, and, and and work those numbers in. I'm sure there's a, a, a formula that we can do that, um, and it'll be or an awareness. It'll be a speculation. It'll be an estimate, of, but it'll be a right. pretty good estimate because yes. it'll be our estimations, but. Right. Yeah, there's no doubt there's going to be a savings. And I would just lot, like to be able to read it. A lot of will be charged for projects, um, but that just what that number is, and I know that and coming from the public, they'd like to know that, and I understand that. Okay, good. That's a perfect answer. Thank you. Yeah. But now, <laughs> gotta get that number. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. And and I couldn't give that to you. Can't do it. Can't do it. No, to see consulting hours in the next budget and that kind of thing. Okay. Anybody else from the public want to comment on this? I don't see any, so close out public comment on this. Um, one of the things I think I like about this is it'll build insti institutional memory. Okay, the, the, the position will be filled by somebody who knows the district quite intimately eventually. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a real plus for this. Mm -hmm. um, and I think you wanted to say something? I, I, I wanted to, to, to comment on and, and thank uh, Lou for his... Um, and, and also, Virgil, I think is your name. Your, yeah, Virgil, yes. Your, your, something that resonates with me a lot is preventing confirmation bias. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you're aware of what that is, is just Very not so. only looking at the things that support your initial premise or your initial position, but being willing to take a look seriously at the con side and understand how the analysis goes forward. So. I, I appreciate when staff does and think that we should do more going into the future of take a look at all sides and make sure that we present to ourselves for our analysis and to the public that we've really done a diligent job looking at all sides and documenting the, the rationale for the choice. Whether it's, you know, yes, it's going to add another person, we're going to have to figure out a desk and a place and, a, you know, all of those logistics, but we think we could cover that, and here's how we're going to do that. It, whether it's just something that simple, but making sure that we are checking all the boxes and not just confirming our own gut sense, even though I trust Rick's gut sense completely, <laughs> you don't know all of the things that go into his head, and it would be helpful to see some of that. And so, but it's, it's really good to have those numbers as we move on so we can say next year how much we, we save the district, because yeah. it shows that we're doing our job and it makes it easy to sell the next position or to yeah, work right. with the public on something else by being able to have some substantial, some numbers. Yeah. And so, you know, and I know Stephanie's already got ideas and says it's very easy, but I didn't say easy, but it's doable. But I think that is important to show savings or did we spend more? Mm -hmm. I mean, it may not always be good, but I think in this case it will, the numbers will be positive towards the district. Well, that's one of the things when Lou was talking, the pros and cons, there were two sort of intangible pros, and that is developing knowledge of the district, which is a huge plus. That's why we like to go back to people for hydrogeologists who know our system already, you know, or, or engineering firms who've worked in this very complex system before. So having the in-house knowledge, as Margaret said, that's going to be invaluable. The other one is sort of the capital margins, 
the capital markets problem where where our little itty bitty two million dollar loan nobody wants to touch it. You know, if you're a little district that calls on people periodically for relatively small consulting contracts, we're not going to be their top priority. We may not get their A team. We may not get their you know their full attention, um, and that's that's just business. So I, I think those are sort of intangible benefits, but I like the idea of especially during this this big ramp up to all these capital projects, a lot of the hours would be capitalized, and that's that's the sort of thing that is just tracked anyhow. That so, is the type of item that we would be right, and I think at least for the first number of years, most of this individual's efforts would be capitalized, I'm guessing, with a small amount of this routine type work filling in the blanks. That's our thoughts. And I mean, it's not, I mean, the whole reason why this is being proposed is because there was, were pros and cons weighed about the prior proposed structure of the project coordinator. So I mean, th those things have been getting looked mm -hmm. at, you know. This has a little bit more flexibility and it has the, the, the certification mm -hmm. that Let's us do some things in house that we wouldn't be able to do otherwise. I think so. Um, I, I think it's it's a good idea, especially considering the complexity of our physical circumstances here, where all kinds of crazy things happen. And the more time you spend in the district, the faster and more confidently you can respond to crazy things that routinely happen here. Other uh, board comment on this? Um, so, um, have we have a motion on the case on this that we have? Uh, I'll move that we uh, <clears throat> go forward with the recommendation that the engineering uh, manager position be created and the other adjustments to the uh, staffing uh, plan as described in item 10A be implemented um, as in the board packet. Second. Okay. Um, okay, Bill. Okay, you you win. Okay, you get the side. <laughs> um, okay. Any other discussion? Um, hearing none. Uh, Holly. Good. Year. Director Hayes. Yes. Director Smallman. Aye. Director Radcliffe. Yes. President Bachman. Yes. Director Bruce. Yes. So, motion passes unanimously, and we will move on to item 10B, which is the review of association, uh, the Aqua Association of California Water Agencies membership. So, yes. thank you. Uh, just recently, we received the 2019 renewal annual dues for the uh, Association of California Water Agencies, known as Aqua. Um, we're now at $18,300. Um, this is an annual membership uh, at the uh, April 16, 2015 board of directors meeting, the board approved membership um, in Aqua. We've been members in the past and we kind of went out and then the boards and, and staff have changed. We decided to go back in. You know, Aqua is the largest political advocate group for local water districts. Um, joining, uh, it was uh, thought that joining uh, Aqua would be to become an active member to provide the district a voice in Sacramento related to, to water laws and state requirements, and particularly at that time it was drought. Uh, there was a lot going on uh, with the drought. One of the, we also are members in uh, CSDA, California Special District, which is very similar to Aqua, but it tailors more to the smaller district and special districts. And the district utilizes CSDA quite quite a bit on conferences and, and, and different. I think we have a CSDA loan at one time. Um, it meets the, the needs of the district. Um, in the memo way back in uh, 2015, it was you know said it's important to remember that we only get positive results out of joining Aqua if we put the time and energy into Aqua. You know, joining is a commitment to utilize uh, the available resource and become uh, an active uh, participant. We have used Aqua very little. I believe one director has gone to a conference and got some informational. For the money, I really don't see the, the membership doing the benefit to the district, not unless we're going to change and start you know, getting into legislation and, and, and utilizing. We're just not utilizing yeah. it. And we sure as heck don't need both Aqua and CSDA. Um, they're a little different, but they do a lot of the same. 
So I was kind of recommending to the board to review this and, and consider uh, uh, not renewing our membership. The CSDA membership is approximately $7,500, 7300 a year. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I mean, so I, I would request that the board consider not renewing the AQUA membership. Yeah. I'll weigh in first for okay. Okay, a change here on this one. Is I, I agree with that. I have participated. I've gone to one aqua conference and I've uh, signed up for one of the seminars. Okay, on groundwater dependent ecosystems, but I think we had a uh, a uh, excess of enthusiasm with the new board and yeah. trying to find educational opportunities uh, four years ago or approximately four years ago. And it, it hasn't worked out, okay, that Aqua, Aqua seems to, to me to be a much broader state-oriented organization. If you're involved in groundwater in the San Joaquin or Sacramento, okay, basins, it's a good thing to be involved in. But um, we, we haven't participated aqua, adequate, you know, enough in order to justify the expense on this. So I agree. That, uh, thank you for bringing that, noticing that and bringing that. You can always go back. The boards, future boards or something changes. Mm -hmm that we feel that we need this type of representation, we can always go back. Right. And, and I would chime in too. I've participated in a conference, I've taken, you know, I've participated in a webinar, and have been loosely associated with their energy committee, which over the time that I've been monitoring it and occasionally participating, has become more and more conservative, as has Aqua in general. And taking, instead of forward-looking stances, the organization has become very much more a sort of join forces and say no organization. And um, their stance on, for example, energy issues, energy water nexus issues, which I think are important because you save money if you save energy, um, is more like, well, it's an unfunded mandate, so we shouldn't have to do anything. So I am in favor of also of saying, mm -hmm. not at this time. And I endorse, I, was, I attended a number of the energy committee meetings. And first of all, I realized that it's not being helpful to our district because we're on a much smaller scale mm -hmm. than many. But the main thrust of Aqua was the legislative advocacy. Mm -hmm. And we get, we get these updates from them, you know, asking mm -hmm. us to support legislation and what they're endorsing. And we're in a little backwater, so to speak, of the California water world. Most of that legislation is irrelevant to us. Right. And now that we have the Groundwater Act passed, you know, that was important to everybody in the state. But a lot of the other legislative um, concerns of Aqua don't really affect us in, in any way. And so I think that's why we haven't been as engaged, because they weren't relevant to our local situation. Uh, CSDA, on the other hand, you know, we go there for policy, guidance, for um, finance information, and it's been very helpful. I think we've participated a lot more in CSDA because they are focused on small districts. And so, districts. Yeah, and I think that's really helpful because whether you're a cemetery district or a rec district or a small water district, you have the same finance issues, you know, so it's not water specific, but it's special district and small district specific, and I've found I've gotten a lot more out of CSDA membership, so I would definitely endorse this. Okay. Um, before I go to the any other board members want to comment on this? Yeah, I, I did know that fact. I think we get everything we need from the CSDA. I thought that's been kind of helpful. And, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know too much at all about Aqua at all. I didn't go to any, but I don't think, I think, we, I think all we need is the, the CSDA membership. Okay. Okay. Go to public. Um, oh. Well, I just wanted to say that um, I recently contacted Aqua with some questions. I was looking into a project and was trying to get some information, and I was told, oh, no, we don't work with you because you're not part of our JPA. So although we're members of Aqua, we're not members of their JPA, mm -hmm. and we were told, no, sorry, you don't get that information, wow, but wow. we'll sell it to you. Oh, geez. Oh, nice. <laughs> well, there oh. There Another reason. <laughs> 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 okay, well, that pretty much seals that. I can't <laughs> <laughs> How about that? You, you can go to public comment there. <laughs> yeah, let's go to public. But I'm a member of the public. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's true. Okay, now formally to the uh, public. Anybody want to comment? Okay, nobody's sticking up. Oh, okay. um, I just. 
totally agree with all your points that um, looks like we're not getting any, any value from them. What's the point? Right. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. I don't see anybody else. So, um, bring back. I think there's no action to be taken on this. I mean, no, that was. Uh, we just let the uh, membership so expire. Much the membership right. Left, so there's no. Yes. We can write them a letter. Yeah, that's very hard because otherwise okay. they keep pounding. Yeah. We can write them a letter. I, I propose that we have Holly contact them. <laughs> With her special raspberry stationery. <laughs> and I'd be surprised if the email didn't continue. Okay, forever. Probably. They get you Okay. Um, anyway. Uh, let's move on to another item, which is uh, a new business, the Programmatic Habitat Conservation Plan, otherwise um, acrim acronymized, okay, as HCP, um, contract with Jody McGraw. So um, I think this might be uh, something you want to start with, is that right? Okay. So the district provides water to a large number of our community who live in Sand Hills habitat. And we have tanks and pumps and, and wells that are located in Sand Hills habitat. And so as we move forward with our capital improvement program, we're going to have more and more projects that are going to have impacts to Sand Hills um, habitats and more specifically to endangered species species that are protected by the State and Federal Endangered Species Act. And so in order for us to do the construction and improve infrastructure in those Sand Hills habitats, um, the Endangered Species Act requires that we have an incidental take permit, which basically compensate, which provides um, a way to compensate for the, for the impacts to those species and those habitats by providing protections either on site or elsewhere, but by providing a way to protect species of the same species in another place. And so, um, so what we're proposing here is that we work with Jody McGraw, who worked with us on the probation tank to get our habitat conservation plan put in place so that we could do the construction on the pr probation tank what we did through the probation tank process was set up sort of a mitigation set aside in Sand Hills Habitat. And so what this will be is the kind of phase two of that mitigation set aside where we now will have a habitat conservation plan that will identify all the projects in the future that will take place in Sand Hills Habitat that will have impacts on endangered species. And so, and so we can mitigate on our set aside that we've already established. Um, and then what will happen is any, well, there'll be a certain um, mitigation cost associated with each, with each of the projects, that those costs will go into the endowment, which has now been set up as part of the probation tank. And so we'll continue to use that endowment and fully fund that endowment so we can do um, management and monitoring on the habitat set aside that we've already established. So this is sort of phase two to the initial phase that we set up with the probation tank, and now we're moving forward with um, setting up a plan for the rest of our our projects that are in Sand Hills Habitat. Okay. Um, come in. Okay. Anybody want? Um, John. Okay. So I, I was curious of the. I mean, not all of the capital improvement projects impact the Sand Hills, right? No, no, just the ones. Roughly, how how many? Any idea of the 75 projects actually do affect the sand hills? How many HCPs would we need? Yeah, I mean, in other words, you know, well, there's also one ongoing HCP, maintenance. So right. What it will be the, the list will identify all of yeah. the projects and what what species on each of those projects will be impacted, and then we will propose mitigation for all of the projects in this one HCP. In one shot. So yeah, I understand that. Like it's going to save us a ton of time. A ton of time and money. Yeah, I understand that. Yeah. Uh, nice. I was just curious how many actual projects impact the sand. Yeah, yeah, there's, it's capital projects and it's also um, rehabs of wells and different things that when we pull a pump and motor out of a yeah. well, we expand our footprint. Um, but we'll, we'll put that information together. We don't have that. Number. Yeah, that'll all, that'll all be identified yeah. through this process, process of writing 
the, the habitat conservation plan. And off the top of my head, I, I'm not really sure, but we'll identify those through the process. Did Jody write the HCP for the probation tank? She did. And then she's also got the contract to actually deliver the services to manage the, the, manage. the, the set aside, correct? Mm -hmm. So, which seems to me kind of, there's not, there's a check and a balance issue there, I think. If we're letting her define how much it's going to take to mitigate all this, and then she's getting the contracts to actually do the services to mitigate them. Well, she doesn't You're letting actually the person define, define the, the mitigation requirements. That's defined by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Okay. So she works with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service to come with, and then the, the district has a big say in Good. The, like what we agree to. Okay. And so she's sort of the middleman there, just negotiating between the district and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service to find an agreeable mitigation um, strategy. Okay. And then she's, she's the one that's um, implementing the management and monitoring on the site that's been identified and required by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service <coughs> and agreed to by the board. Okay. Yeah. yeah, it's a huge uh, commitment of time on her part, six months, you know. Of a year, basically, to get the biologist almost full time. To, yeah. <laughs> it is. A, it's a big. It'll be a big, heavy lift, and yeah. she'll have to. We'll have, we'll have a lot of back and forth between the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and the district. She knows her business. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's amazing. <laughs> so I understand this. This contract's sort of like a pay-as-you-go, and there's, you know, it's not a, you know, whatever. But one of the little confusing things is that it actually could include the removal of the. Uh, broom, because I know she did some work with it, it's cited in the contract with Acacia and the broom removal thing. So, w which brings me to the important thing is I, I, I would really would I think that this contract should include the language of the fact that the voters have really agreed, um, voted to not uh, the use of glyphosate. So I would I would request that in, in this contract. Just so we're, that we're all on the same page, that she includes the fact that if not include uh, prohibiting the use of Category One and Two known and probable carcinogens from the Safe Drinking Water and Toxic Enforcement Act, and, and just, just basically in the contract, just so we don't have any problems, uh, you know, because I know I, I, she probably wouldn't have a problem with just stating that in the contract, but I just don't want us to, to because because. Uh, my feeling is the voters have spoken. You know that was it's just a big issue, and that the new the new elective board is not going to allow for the use of um, glyphosate or any other. Um, can I? Can, yeah. Can yeah. I? Can I? Can I speak okay. to that? Um, this, I appreciate your your thoughts about that, and um, I understand there's great concern about that. This contract won't have any implementation. This is just uh, right. writing um, um, the habitat conservation plan, which will talk about mitigation requirements for impacts to inf infrastructure. There's no actual on the ground work included in this. Correct. There's not going to be broom pulling on the, uh, the Olympia watershed. There wouldn't be not as, as, a project, as a project, as a listed project. Wouldn't we list that as a project or a base of species eradication? Or so that, or? so where that piece would come in is in the management and monitoring okay. uh, plan, okay. which we've already. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I if you remember when I, I recommended that manual pulling with a biological consultant, right. i.e. Jody McCraw, that she would participate in that project. So I just. Right, so that's a completely, that's not yeah. what we're talking about. Yeah. So that, I know that it's really confusing because there are so many I know, I know, I'm, 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 really, I'm really not. Puzzle. But what, what we're talking, yeah. what, what you're talking about is the management and monitoring plan, which is already well, no, in process. No, I'm really talking about the language in the actual contract that's going to be This signed. contract is not going to have any yeah. language around um, methods or strategies for managing or monitoring the property. It yeah. will have um, identify the square footage of impact on each of the projects and how much mitigation um, fees will be associated with those uh, impacts and it, it's going to detail out costs 
of mitigation, but it's not going to spe specify the management or monitoring or how the, the property gets managed. Well, I, I, I just think it should have that language just, in the contract. I mean, that's all. That's I, all. I, I think it's irrelevant because it this doesn't talk about implementation of any action. This is a study document. It's a planning document. A, a study and an evaluation type document, and which is what HCPs always are. The, this information will be the basis for future action, but it, there's no action here. It's just an evaluation. The draft be submitted to the, the environmental committee before it's sent in to U.S. Fish and Wildlife. We can bring it. To the, we'll bring it definitely yes, to the board. We can bring the draft before it's submitted back to the board to have a, a final look. Um, seeing uh, of, of your concerns, but it's no problem. It's going to be a healthy document. <laughs> Does that mean lengthy? <laughs> it's going to be a hundred thirty thousand dollar document, so yeah, needs to be. That's healthy. Okay, let me go to the public first. Uh, Mr. Francis, <coughs> stand up. So, thanks, Rick. You know, I answered one of the questions. <laughs> so appreciate that. Is there a um, expiry time on this HCP? So, for example, wetlands delineation plans are seven-year expiry, I believe, or five years, something like yes. that. Is there a so I, usually there's some expiry on yeah, these things? Yeah, I imagine there will be. I don't know what that timeline will be at this time. I expect it will be something like 20 years. Okay, but, but that's just a well, uh, educated guess. But you understand my concern. Yeah. If the expiry is X, and we're going to spend a lot of money looking at really big projects, we might not be spending money wisely. So it would be really nice to know what that expiry time was before making so it was a big way out. Too. So we want to make sure no, I, that we I have I, I understand. And so it's ongoing maintenance at right. the same time. So I that's the part of us. All I'm yeah, saying is that expiry things, time is too you know, short. If we, if we have the habitat conservation in place, it will have an expiration date. Mm -hmm. But at that time, you'll be able to take it back and just renew it or you know, modify it if necessary. So that the this is what I've talked to uh, Chad Mitchum from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service about that before, and he said they want to have an expiration date. So if there's new information that comes available in the next 20 years, they can use that information to modify it, and adapt the plan to make it the best for everybody. But I, I always you know. just get really skeptical of folks that tell me, "Don't worry about it in the future; you'll just be able to renew it, no problem." Uh, maybe, maybe not. That, that it, but I just, I just wanted to make sure that everybody understood that there is a, there may be an issue here in terms of the money spent versus the time that we'll actually be able to keep that balance. Well, I would just point out that the habitat conservation plan is not an optional. Understand? It's not optional. We, we're, if we want to do maintenance or, or any kind of improvements in Sand Hills habitat, which we have to, uh, we have to have. Uh, incidental take permit, which requires that we have a habitat conservation plan. I understand all that. Yeah. No, it, wasn't, it, it wasn't a question. Yeah. A good example, too, when we just lost this well, we had to get special permission and exemptions to move forward before we can have this plan. And if we have this plan with HCP, it'll speed up and we'll be able to move right ahead because these projects will already be outlined and the mitigation and so forth. So it's a, it's a worthwhile plan for the district to have. But that is a good question. You don't want to expire before we, we get the work done. The issue was not whether or not we needed it or whether it's yeah. good to have or anything. That is all understood. When I had to do a second wetlands delineation after the first one ran out, I paid 2x. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But so basically went right back to first principles and said, hey, we can't use what we did before. We have to look at it all over again. That's all. Okay. Okay, any other public comment? Ms. Norton. Jen, did, now didn't you just say that you believed it was 20 years now? I, I, would, I would guess that it would be 20 years. So that would be great, but we'll be able to confirm that. We will be able to confirm that. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. Any other comments? Um, <coughs> Rick Moran from Ben Lomond. Um, so I looked at this thing. Uh, I'm concerned with the Olympia watershed, as most of you know. And what I didn't see in the contract was, and I think in an HP, HCP, there has to be some sort of public hearings. And I didn't see any list of possible public hearings in this thing. So I just wanted to make sure that the public has an opportunity to weigh in on this. Um, there are required public hearings 
CEQA process. This isn't the CEQA process. They're, each of the projects will have their own CEQA process, but this is this is an Endangered Species Act requirement, not a CEQA process. Okay. Well, we will bring it back to the board for review before we send it in, so there will be some review right. for the public. <coughs> But it may not be the public. <coughs> right. For sure, the board will have multiple chances to look yeah. at this. Okay. Other public input? Okay. I don't see any. Um, further board discussion? I just had a technical question. The California ESA versus the federal one, mm -hmm. is ours more or less strict than the feds? Less. Mm -hmm. and covers different species. Um, species. Okay. And sometimes there's overlap, but not in every case. I was just wondering, I mean, we have all these endemics that are only in California and only in Santa Cruz County, mm -hmm. and West yet some of, you know, yeah, Santa, and, some of them aren't even like the, the Arisimum and the Arisimum, I mean, the, the, it's not even federally endangered. Right. It just surprises me. A lot of the California endangered species are plants, in my experience. <coughs> People yeah. don't care about plants. No. California cares about plants. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> Just curious. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, everybody else on the board want to comment? Okay. Um, do we hear a motion? I would move approval and direct the district manager to enter into a contract with Jody McGraw Consulting for the preparation of the habitat conservation plan. Okay. I will second. Okay. Any further discussion? Okay. Holly? Director Hayes? Yes. Director Smallman? No. Director Ratcliffe? Yes. Director Boffman? Yes. Direct, um, uh, President Boffman, Director <laughs> Bruce? <laughs> yes. Okay. Okay, let's move on to uh, 10D. Um, which is uh, discuss probation tank HCP implementation discussion and possible action by the board regarding the probation tank HCP. Okay, so following in, okay, in the same vein. vehicles are staging, they don't cross over certain boundaries so that we're not expanding the, the temporary impacts to the species on site. Um, things like um, collecting seed and um, putting them back out after the construction is, after the temporary impacts are completed. Various <laughs> biological protective measures that, um, that, that we are asking for a contract with Jody McGraw to conduct. Okay. Okay, you look like you might be continuing. I, oh. <laughs> I didn't have my thing. <laughs> um, board comment? We know we need to do this. Pardon? Uh, we know we need to do this. So this has been, this is part of the project. This is like, yeah. You know, it's like, a, it should be a subcontract to the construction. But the only comment I'll, I'll have is that this, and there's another one following this, um, these contracts should have been bought to the board before construction started and we're behind on that. Um, projects are already in construction. She's already out doing a lot of the work in her firm. Um, this should have been the board back before we uh, award the bid or when we award the bid, it should have came in. Um, and be, you'll see another contract here for, for different types of services, but we're behind schedule. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anybody else? Uh, I don't want to put anything up. I think it's something we need to do. So. Okay. Um, public comment on this? I don't see any. So um, come back here. Um, they should carry on. We should make it legal. Carry on, carry on. <laughs> <laughs> so just, just, just 
point of clarification. So this does not include the monitoring contract, the management contract. That contract that, was already approved. Okay, that was twenty some thousand dollars. That's what the non-wasting endowment pays for, basically. Is that no, ongoing? Really paying for it. It, will, it will pay for the implementation of the plan. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, that for perpetuity. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So mm -hmm. the biological services are different. This is separate. This is yeah. a separate mitigation. And this is on site. On it's the probation. On site. the actual on construction site, site. Yes. not. Not on the mitigation. Yeah. Area. This, is, this is. Yeah. Okay. Project well, associated, task project. Right. I should make, make like sure a, a chart <laughs> of all of the different. <laughs> just want to make yeah. sure I was tracking. And where we yes. stand in each of those, yeah. of those yeah. in terms of the, of the process. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I would move approval the recommendation that uh, we direct the district manager to enter into a contract with Jody McGraw Consulting for the consulting biological services around the tank, probation tank replacement project. And I'll second that. Mm -hmm. And no further discussion, I assume. Holly? Director Hayes? Yes. Director Smallman? Aye. Director Ratcliffe? Yes. President Boffman? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Director Bruce? Yes. Okay. Let's move on to 10E, um, which is the radio survey and path study at San Lorenzo Valley Water District um, in Lompico. So, um, yes, and uh, this is a source. In June 2016, the, the district consolidated with Lompico County Water District as part of the consolidation. Uh, Lompico customers are participating in several capital uh, replacement projects, including replacement of the SCADA system, supervisory control, and data acquisition equipment, as outlined in the assessment district number 2016 1 engineering report. Um, the type of SCADA system we use can communicate uh, through the district's main SCADA either via radio, telephone, lease line, internet, um, or district's own burial cable. The preferred method is radio because there's no monthly charges. Internet can be I think it's 120 bucks a month per site. Um, and they all have different drawbacks. Um, radio uh, will be the, the best for that canyon. Um, and we're hoping that we can move signals across the canyon and then move signals again right to the, uh, the district main scale. We don't have to worry about down trees on telephone lines or on the internet. To, to facilitate, um, to make sure that the equipment we purchased will communicate in a radio survey. Basically the provider comes out sets up equipment, transceivers, and actually physically goes from point to point and makes sure that the radio signal is strong and they can receive the type of frequencies. And, there's, and they'll do an analysis that when it rains, it, you know, the, the, the pine trees with the long needles and, and redwood trees don't distort the signal. Um, the worst thing that we could do is not to do the survey and, and purchase the equipment and plug it in. It doesn't work and it won't communicate. Pico is a, different, a, a difficult area to communicate just because of the canyon and the trees. Um, it's difficult, but it's not like a lot of our system. We have, we have radio in a lot of parts of our system. Um, in some areas of our system, radio will not work. Um, so the radio survey will, will tell us before we purchase the equipment. It's part of moving forward um, on the tank replacement um, project. And I request the board to do uh, Approve in the amount of eleven thousand and change. Now, answer any questions. Will this involve consideration of placement of towers, or more so the quality of the receivers? And I don't like to uh, use the word towers because it's a very small antenna okay. <laughs> for starters. Okay. Um, well, there need to be towers, it, it, I guess. Will, it, it, it'll be a not. pipe, a three-quarter pipe pole. Okay. Um, it's a small antenna. The radio equipment is very small. Um, It'll go on placement, yes, and it'll look at our, you know, the one good thing about the water district is obviously all of our facilities are high, and that's what you want with radio. There are a couple, even you know, the Madrone booster, uh, the Lampico booster, they're, they're more encompassed in the forest. They're not up on, on peaks. So it'll be interesting to see, you know, how well, how strong the, the survey is. We've had pro issues, we've tried cell service up there now, to try to uh, operate the, the drone booster, and it's very hit and miss. 
and it drops out. It just and when it rains, it really drops out. Um, uh, importantly, to to the SCADA system. Okay. So we hope to be able to take the signal and move it over to uh, our SCADA backbone, our main trunk lines, either at the NIA tanks or the quail tanks by radio. And once it gets there, then it's on the main SCADA system. Mm -hmm. We'll have access to it everywhere. Are those line of sight to the other uh, locations for the? Main Looks tank? like it. Close. But I'm mm -hmm. not gonna, I, you know, I wouldn't okay. try to uh, to say it's going to work or not without without the survey. And, and the facilities are the Madrone tank, the Caskey tanks, the Lewis tanks, the Madrone booster, the Lampico booster, and the Nina tank and the Quail tank. And that's the, the, the existing district facilities, Nina and Quail, that's where our hubs are. It's mm -hmm. not like um, um, that we're moving into the, to the rest of the distribution system outside of Lampico. That's not the intent here. It's just to utilize the backbone. Okay. okay. John? Yeah, Rick, is there any thought about including the badger meters and the cellular kind of communications that they're well, we're working on not always? I'm working with the fire districts, there's a program that the fire districts can request and, and public safety can request, not just fire, but we got included in to get enhanced cellular service. And it's my understanding that H E and T is working with a lot of other agencies, smaller areas, to bring cell service in. It's a different frequency and so forth. Uh, we'd like to bring uh, increased cell service on camera, you know, for... Uh, that would benefit everybody. everybody. It would benefit every, and it would benefit everybody. You can be a yeah. feather in the district's cap because it would, yeah. it would help. And we have sites, and we could work with these companies to, on a joint project um, to bring, uh, hopefully bring cell service in. Um, we've met, met with John Stipes, and I've met with the uh, Polar Creek's fire chief, and, and they're getting some information, and we're trying to move ahead on that. You know, don't know, because, you know, cell service, you know, there's no money there, you know, but there's money out there for public safety. So, we're hoping. Well, if you have a, uh, an internet solution for the other needs here, I mean, you could build off of that and provide mm -hmm. cellular off of that. Then. Mm -hmm. With pico cells and the like, so, yeah. and that would help the badger meter issue at the same time. But, okay. Okay. Any other board initial thoughts on um, the public, Mr. Fultz? If you're re you're referring to band 14 on the cellular, that I couldn't tell you. Over my head. <laughs> so if that's a public sector band, if that's the case, you will not be able to use any of your phones on it. It's a completely different uh, band. Okay. And typically, those radios cost uh, five thousand dollars. Prices are coming down, but it, it's specialized still. Um, how many days and how many people are going to be out there? I have, I have to. I can get you the survey, uh, the, the background. I can. I don't take the board's time now to go through it. Through the I'll get you that information. Is that three days? Is that what it said? Yeah. Price for three days of on-site survey consulting. Uh, approximately seven sites. And how many people? Two. Mm, not sure. I think these are out of Florida. That's for the radio. Oh, no, it doesn't say the amount of people. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Olivia. Yeah, I have a question. Um, one of our neighbors has a ham radio operation running through redwood trees, lines and stuff. Uh, has that been looked into instead of regular radio, just ham radio? Two meter. Um, There's no such thing as regular hand radio. It's not regular hand radio. <laughs> <laughs> no. There is a very broad. Whatever. And he's got wires all through all the redwood trees instead of poles. So he seems to be uh, operating ham radio that way. Very specialized. Yeah, it's it's really complicated. Yeah. 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 They get the squirrels to run the lines. Yeah, yeah. Okay, um, Tony, and then I'll get the squirrels. Henry. Okay, Tony. Um, well, a couple of things. So, did you say that you it has to be line of sight? No. They like line of sight. It does not necessarily have to be 100% line of sight. Okay. Um, but if it's marginal, you want to be careful because of tree growth. Right. And we've had those issues in the past. Great. Line yeah. of but sight. The tank sites are up high. You know, you know where the tank right, sites are. Right. Right. Well, so I know where Lewis is. For and sure. we have a lot of good line of sight. That's one of the best ones. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so. 
Mm, okay. But that's why it's important to get the radio survey. Right. I, the last thing I want to do is spend, you know, there's the, 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 the scale of budgets, I think it's a couple hundred thousand plus. Mm -hmm. I don't want to spend a lot of money on all of a And in. they already used part of it on the temporary yeah, stand, yeah. which that was, you know, a debatable issue. And then the other thing, one, so you mentioned those other two locations, the quail um, mm -hmm. and the other one, mm -hmm. that, it, that won't come out of the assessment district funds, well, right? The, the, most of the equipment's already there. They're the hubs. They're, they're the mm -hmm. receivers that get into the rest of the scan. Okay. Now, whether additional equipment is needed to make Lumpico work, mm -hmm. it would just be for Lumpico, so I would consider that to come out of the assessment district. Okay. If it was just for now, mm -hmm. it was for an upgrade to say that uh, we had to upgrade that for the whole system, that'd be a little different. We'd have to look into that. One other thing that I retired from AT&T, and we have a, um, we, if you're an AT&T customer, you can subscribe to an M cell, a piece of equipment that connects to your cable, and then your cell service works, and you have a pretty wide range. Well, if they have this safety money that fund, maybe Comcast and um, maybe we can work them together to be able to come up with a solution. We're definitely looking into to improving cell service. Yeah, at t doesn't support their micro cells anymore. Oh, no. well, well it's <laughs> I just found out I had to replace mine, so. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It does work, no. though. Yeah, I continue uh, to use it. So. Yeah, I still oh, use it, but they don't support it anymore. Mm -hmm. My turn? Yes. <laughs> okay. At one point, uh, people were coming to Lompico wanting to put towers mm -hmm. so there would be cell service but they kind of faded into the night because there aren't that many people there. But maybe there's a way you can get them to come back. Everybody I don't says. know. Uh, the other thing is, okay, the tanks are in pretty high places, but what about the other things you were talking about? What if you can't uh, radio? everything that you had on your list. Then we'll, we'll do a combination. A combination. Most likely internet. Most likely internet. We have internet, I believe, out there now in a couple of locations because the cell service won't work. And so... Um, yeah, internet worked at, yeah, at the water district, is, nothing else. I prefer not to use internet because it comes with a monthly fee. Yeah. Um, so cost, obviously ongoing costs are our concern. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. Oh, Virgil. Thank you. Um, I really like to say that this sounds like an intelligent approach um, to, to, to the problem you have. Um, and um, uh, every time you try to add this or add that and modify it, you add to the complexity. And what you have here is probably the simplest solution to your problem. Everything else is going to be a little more expensive and a little more complicated. And radio frequency communication like this is, is well understood. They know how to build the antennas. They know everything. And you, you also have to understand that you're limited to the frequencies you can use and the power you can use over those frequencies. Right. You're getting somebody out there to say, the $70,000 you're going to spend for this system, it's going to work, and it's going to work for 20 years. That is a big thing to, to, to you know, be satisfied with. And, and I, for somebody that claims not to be really up to snuff on some of this stuff, you've always taken a very good approach to it. I, I do have the experience. <laughs> that, that I do have. Amen. So anyway, I... I I really support this approach. Thank you. Not that I'm matters. <laughs> <laughs> I disagree on that. <laughs> it matters. <laughs> um, okay. Any other public? Okay. I think you were the last one. Um, back to the board. Any um, further discussion? Um, I would move um, approval of resolution number 10 of 1819. The radio survey for Lompico. 
path study and sole source procurement. A second. Okay. Um, Holly. Sorry. Um, Director Hayes. Yes. Director Smallman. Aye. Director Ratcliffe. Yes. President Bachman. Yes. Director Bruce. Yes. Okay. Um, and let's move on to item 10F, the uh, ratification of the joint powers authority between San Lorenzo Valley Water District and the San Margarita Groundwater Agency. And um, I'll allow you to... to this one. So um, I got a call a few months ago from uh, Terry Rain, who's the attorney for the JTA, because one of the landowners had noticed that um, the signature, President Bachman, you had signed the JPA agreement on behalf of the district after the board voted to approve it. Um, and one of the landowners noticed that the, the agreement itself calls for the president to sign. Um, and in fact, there was no formal designation of authority for the vice president to sign in place of the president. So it would be appropriate to clean that up since it's been brought to our attention by simply ratifying the sig your signature, President, President Faulkner, on the GBA agreement, consistent with the board's approval of that agreement in 2017. Right. And um, that was an instance in which um, the current president of the board was not able to be at that meeting. Um, it was the assumption that um, since for our body the vice president can uh, sign in the absence of the president that that would be appropriate uh, authority for the JPA and um, to get that, okay, so there's no ambiguity about that and no questioning of it. I think this is good to get all the ends wrapped up about this and just uh, get this tidy so that there's no, uh, and I, I think it was brought um, from a good purpose, from the private well owner purpose who wanted to be sure that things were tight, okay, and I agree with that. So. Um, any other comment from any staff and any other of the board members? Okay, I don't see any um, public. Anybody want to comment on this? Okay, I don't see anybody. So um, I'll bring this back here. And I guess since um, it was my signature that was in um, question, uh, <laughs> I will make the motion that. Um, after having reviewed uh, this memo, the Board of Directors um, votes that, um, that my signature on this, again, will be uh, valid and proper and the authorized signature on the JPA agreement. Oh, and there is a resolution? Oh, and, and, do, and do that thusly by approving resolution number 9 um, of 1819. Okay. I will second that. Okay. Okay, any other discussion? Okay, seeing none, um, can we have a vote? Director Hayes? Yes. Director Smallman? Aye. Director Ratcliffe? Yes. President Bachman? Yes. Director Bruce? Yes. Okay. Um, said passes. And now, um, let's move on to 10G, the probation tank SCADA sole source procurement. Yes, thank you. The, the district is in the process, as we've been talking about, replacing uh, the probation tank as part of the project All SCADA equipment is being replaced. Um, the existing uh, equipment requires copper communications wire to be run cross country um, across uh, Santa Cruz Sand Hills, which features uh, a habitat suitable for federally endangered Mount Hermon June Beetle. The new equipment will communicate via radio transmission and will be solar powered. And something I should have put in this memo that I didn't. Um, by, move, by replacing this equipment with radio and solar power, we're removing approximately a $90,000 expenditure for a power drop and building to, to house the power and equipment and circuit breakers. Um, so there's a, a, a significant savings there. I should have been in this memo. Oh, I'm oh, sorry. Um, so what we're asking uh, for the board to, to move ahead and approve uh, the expenditure of $33,410 for the purchase of scale equipment for the probation tank. Um, this is the, the Emerson brand that we utilize throughout the distribution system. This is why I'm asking a source procurement. The district has a significant investment 
in uh, Emerson equipment, and we need to continue to match equipment. And plus, with this equipment and by having the same proprietary equipment, when a piece of equipment gets damaged, lightning or something, on a very important site, such as the probation tank, we can swap it with a less important site that we can run manually and not have any outages uh, or any problems um, with. So to have the proprietary Emerson equipment throughout the district uh, is a real benefit to the district. And this is the same equipment that we'll be moving ahead through with, as with Lone Pico eventually. We're requesting the board to, to approve the attached resolution. I think it makes practical sense and I like the idea of saving a little bit under sixty thousand dollars yeah. sounds like so, so I think that's money, so uh, when we win. won't have to manage yeah. or maintain that electrical drop yeah. and problems then we also get the the, uh, the copper wire out of the sand hills yeah which you know if something happens to that copper wire we have to replace it it's an HCP we have to, mm. you know it's it's the less there the better Yes. The more we can get out of the sand hills, the better. Is that stopped? Yeah. So there's like, no other electrical power required at that site. No, it's be all solar. Nice. Um, the um, does not the uh, of protection does not require power. Um, there's a mixing valve in the bottom of the tank that just operates through hydraulics, so there's no other power required. <coughs> Okay. Um, public input, Mr. Foltz. What's the battery backup capacity in the solar? How many days could you run without the sun? It's been at other sites anywhere from seven to fourteen, and we usually replace the small battery with a much larger battery, more of a car type battery than the little battery they have. The small batteries they have get you like twenty-four hours. But we like a seven but, day. But our district standard is like 14 days. Seven, 14 days, yeah. Okay. Any other public input? Okay. See none. Bring back here. Further questions? I would, I would move uh, we approve resolution 11 18 19, probation tank skate, a sole source procurement. Okay. I'll second such. Director Hayes? Yes. Director Smallman? Aye. Director Ratcliffe? Yes. President Bachman? Yes. Director Bruce? Yes. Okay. Um, okay, let's move on to 10H. And that's Probation Tank Inspection <laughs> Services Contract <laughs> Amendment. That's correct. Um, as you know, we are in uh, the process of construction of the probation tank uh, to uh, Canyon Springs Enterprises, and the cost of that project is $1.8 million. As part of that project, there is specialized inspections, such as coatings, um, welding, uh, soils, uh, mechanical engineering, um, and so forth. Um, this contract, uh, the district awarded a contract um, to MME to do the consulting services for the project management. Um, these contracts um, through MME are in addition to that. This is an amendment to the original contract um, in the uh, amount of $262,750. Again, this should have been done when we awarded two Canyon Springs. Um, we are behind on this. Should have been brought in at that time too before the work began. Okay. Um, initial board thoughts. So this, this covers all those little like special, right? Yeah, all the special. And some, I say a couple of them were a little more expensive than we like, but there's travel because uh, the uh, tanks being constructed in Bakersfield or Castle Robles. I believe we have to. They have to go down there to do the inspection on welds, on paintings and coatings. It's going to be pre, uh, pre constructed on site and brought up and put together. But we should have figured all this stuff out before. We should have had, we should have had this contract yeah. when we started. That would be the, the, the typical way it's done that you go out and before you start this, you have all your consultants yeah. lined up. Um, 
because we're involved now. We're, we're in the process now. I mean, these are all good consultants, um, but we didn't really have a chance to bid. Yeah. Right? So these were not bidded because of the, uh, the, the, the time restraints. Um, so we, we should do a better job and, and have it done and have it bidded right bid after that tank yeah. before, during the process of getting bonds and everything else, and we could have bidded these projects. And we should. Okay. Other board? Public? See no comment from the public. Um, return here. Um, any other board comment before we have Rick, I just, I just appreciate your cleaning up of all the details and not leaving this as some kind of a nasty surprise of wiggling things under rocks that we would find later in the process. Thank you. Okay. Motion. Mm -hmm. This stuff oh. engineering would do too, yeah. or in house engineering yeah. would, would make sure this stuff is getting done and mm -hmm. make sure these contracts are getting done. Um, so that's the end of the process of that person. Yeah, I appreciate that. And all the, all the firms seem to have excellent references. And all we've used all those before. Yeah. 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 We've used all those before. And, 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 and I'm confident in the firm that just the process, how we yeah. got here, could have been dealt with mm -hmm. differently. Okay. Um, hear a motion? Pardon? Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. Yes. Um, okay. okay. Are you? I'll make a motion to approve the uh, contract. The price not to exceed was like 30. Uh, um, the total was 262750 262750 for uh, the. Uh, Word for special inspections for the provision tank. Okay. Second? Second. Okay. And Director no. Hayes? Yes. Director Smallman? Aye. Director Ratcliffe? Yes. President Bachman? Yes. Director Bruce? Yes. Okay. Um, and now we can skip ahead and um, go on to the Quail Hollow slash Olympia Wells rehabilitation evaluation. Yes, the district's uh, well, hollow well 5A on the B well 3 has been losing uh, water production over the last three years. The loss of production may be a plugging or decline water levels or a combination of both. An assessment is needed to determine the cause of reduction in uh, production. Uh, this work would be a, a review of the current hydrological conditions in these wells to allow the district to make an informed decision as whether to rehabilitate the wells and the type of rehabilitation that we would do. Uh, Martin, Martin Feeney has been the district uh, consulting hydrologist for many years performing these similar tasks in which he just performed uh, in the uh, or, uh, Pass Jampo 7 and he is our uh, hydrologist on the construction of Pass Jampo Well 8. Um, after he does his report, the district would move ahead and bid <coughs> services to do said work. Uh, so this would only tell us what needs to be done and an RFP would be produced from this work and then we would go out to bid for the, uh, for the actual uh, rehabilitation work if that's what society the need. Uh, both those wells, <coughs> the, the Olympia Well um, 3 well is a 1989 earthquake replacement. I think 5A was similar after that, and you have to your head how old 5A is? 1993. 1993. So these wells are old, but this was well field. These are getting old. Just a tidbit there. That's something to keep in the back of your mind. Um, go ahead. Yeah, what is the typical life of a well or a well field? If something was put in in 93 and it sort of reached its anticipated well, lifespan, I, I or is it sort of so variable depending yeah. on conditions yeah. that it's hard to say? It all depends on the steel used in the well, okay. whether it's stainless steel or mild steel, and these wells are all mild steel, put in in 93 and 89. So the life expectancy of a well is 30 years with mild steel in it. And then, so we're done, the clock is ticked. It's also the factor like some of those, they get clogged up and you have to do like acid. Well that's what this would be. You know, acid, acid like, you know, oiler, mild or steel, or it's not good to do. Yeah, yeah that's can't a lot of good combination yeah. there. So it'll be a, a combination or a type of cleaning. Yeah, and that, that'll be determined. Now, 
past example, well, eight is finishing up construction now is um, stainless steel. It was stainless steel. Uh, we're just no, uh, we're the new one. The new one. Past example, five A is stainless steel. The screens are. The screens are. Um, so there's um, as we replace, we put in stainless. But back then, they didn't do stainless. How will you know whether plugging is the, and I take it that's the porosity of the adjoining, okay, rock, okay, you mean by plugging, or you mean plugging in, well, the, it could be in the screen? Well, iron bacteria, or mm -hmm. okay. you know, iron bacteria, or just from years of use, fines coming in, right. and plugging behind the screens and into the gravel pack. Right. And if that's the case, I don't believe that um, rehabilitation will do much good, right. um, or it'll be short-lived, correct? Isn't that so, what went wrong with the Pest Temple Well? Pest Temple Well was carbon steel that failed. Mm -hmm. Okay, just rusted through. Just the holes came through it, and then the gravel Sand pack kept stuff. coming in, and then we tried to swedge it, put basically send patches mm -hmm. down over it, and then the casing just started splitting. Okay. Um, that well was, you know, reached its life expectancy. Okay. Other board comments? Public on this? Ms. Henry? Oh, uh, okay. I appreciate that you uh, came up with this. It's been going on for three years. Uh, it just, I, I mean, it's in a good part of the aquifer and for it to, for them to stop producing should have been like a well, big red flag. It, it dropped off, Lois, and some of it we believe it was to the drought. Yeah. And some of it they just naturally drop off over years. Right. But this year, I don't, I don't have the number off the top of my head how much it dropped. But it, and there's, and we can tell that the, the water level from drawdowns, there's water there. So it appears to be a plug. Okay. Um, Instead of the walls collapsing. Right. We, we didn't, we're not, when, when walls collapse, you'll start getting, pump, you'll get pumping of gravel pack. Okay. And you'll get, you know, the well will stop right then and there. A lot of times it'll, it'll seize the motor. Right. Or you start getting small amounts of gravel pack, and then you know that, you I'm know, glad you cheat you're the doing well. this. That's uh, all I'm going to say. Thank well, you. But wells are inherently a, a, a pain in the neck from the day you drill them. And <laughs> oh. they constantly lose production, and it's, it's, it's just a maintenance now. I, it's a money I know. Hole. <laughs> it is a money hole. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Um, any other board? Okay. Any other public comment? Okay. I don't see any? Come back. Um, any other board comment? Anybody want to make a motion? I would move approval of resolution thirteen of eighteen nineteen, the sole source um, resolution to approve a sole source contract for the Quail Hollow Olympia Well rehabilitation evaluation. Second. Okay. Holly? Director Hayes? Yes. Director Smallman? Aye. Director Ratcliffe? Yes. President Bachman? Yes. Director Bruce? Yes. Hey Rick, in your production comparison uh, on page, what are we, page 247, this looks like the production is about half of what it was five years ago. Uh, on both of those wells. Well. No it has been dropping off, but you know they all have dropped off with with the drought, yeah. um, and then this last two years or the last year we started to get some rainfall, and two you know when the water level drops, so does the production. It's all hydraulics, obviously. Yeah. Um, okay, um, that concludes um, new business. So we have a consent agenda with uh, one item on it. Um, go first to publish on this. Does anybody uh, want to comment on the consent agenda? I don't see any. Um, so, so we have minutes from the last board of directors meeting on this. Um, any, anybody on the board want to say anything about it? And shall we move? I would move approval. Okay. I'll second that. Any discussion? Okay, Holly. One second, so 
Sorry. Director Hayes? Yes. Director Smallman? Sorry. Director Ratcliffe? Yes. President Hoffman? Yes. Director Bruce? Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, and now for the large topic of district reports. Um, I'll open that up to any of the any staff that wants to come. I'll start with you, Rick, if you want to go in. Admin and Engineering. Um, no need. I can ask public. Or I should Page 187 is the, is the beginning of that. considered a real success was the community outreach where we met at several different restaurants or coffee shops. Uh, Stephanie and I, um, we had three different um, outreaches and we had anywhere between eight to twelve people and got some really good questions and from all different, tough, different types of questions from, you know, billing to meter locations to leaks that were thought but not to be repaired, um, board meeting and, you know, etiquette, uh, number of meetings, um, enough to where I would like to, uh, I'm going to bring a, a report back or a memo back to the board and uh, recommend that we continue uh, to have these outreach. Um, we really got some, some great feedback and talked to some people and a lot of it required um, follow-up. Uh, and which we made sure we followed up to show that the people that came to those outreaches that we were serious about hearing their concerns. Uh, so it was well, I thought it was well received um, by the public and I think, you know, we want to continue doing doing those outreaches. Uh, past Temple Well Construction, we're in the uh, test pumping. The well has been constructed, now we are in the test pumping. And after we get our test pumping done, we'll be designing uh, the actual well, the pump and motor that goes in the ground, wellhead construction, and uh, state approval. We'll have to have a, a state health permit amendment, which is just a little time consuming, but we'll be moving around along. Um, and the Lump Pico Assessment District projects, we're working with a consultant on the six redwood tanks and the PRVs. They're moving right along with the redwood tanks, um, trying to locate, trying to figure out how we're going to uh, keep people in water at the same time that they're constructing. The PRVs, so we did final review of the, uh, the plans uh, yesterday. Um, James spent time and I spent time with an outside consultant um, on the final review, and we should be out to bid by the first of next week. So that's been a struggle to get those through. There's just been a lot of bits and pieces to it. Um, but we we'll, should be out to bid for the replacement of those PRDs by next week. That's all I have on my report. Okay. Is there any other staff want to? I, I would be fine. Um, on November 5th, we had a, a multi-agency, regulatory agency um, meeting here at the district. And we talked, and we talked with Fish and Wildlife and NIMS, the county, and various regulatory agencies, um, regional, state, and federal, to talk about our the four-year update of our stream flow and temperature monitoring and how our water diversions are impacting fish habitat in the San Lorenzo River and how it's impacting total stream flow and temperature. And we've been monitoring um, pools and ripples and and how our diversions impact temperature as well as stream flow. Um, and then we, and then that was sort of the background information. And then the second half of the meeting, we talked about the conjunctive use grant and where we are with that process. Um, we have c completed the hydrological assessment. And um, so we did a, a full report on what our hydrological assessment is. And then um, 
And then we presented a strategy for assessing how the, how we can best move. So the hydro, so basically the hydrological assessment looked at what happens and how can we most efficiently move water through our system to be able to sustainably manage both surface water for fish habitat and groundwater resources in the south system that are overdrafted and the north system like Quail Hollow and Olympia. So we can do both and really best optimize our operations here at the Water District in order to have sustainable groundwater and surface water management in the future, especially with climate change mm -hmm. and things that are coming. So um, it was a really great meeting. Uh, we have a clear path forward for how we're going to assess fish habitat and, and um, fish resources and how um, we can best improve fish habitat through conjunctive use. And so well, that will be the next step, will be to complete a fish assessment. And then um, once we get those kind of two major hurdles done, we'll do a, a big public engagement um, workshop kind of um, outreach and do a bunch of public communication around this project and how and how it's coming along. Um, it's, it was a great it was a great meeting, and the resource agencies were really positive about the process. They were really impressed with how uh, our district is really. Um, taking the initiative to, to um, improve water resource management in, in our area. Can I just sure. chime in here on that? Thank you. Having a positive relationship with the regulatory agencies is so incredibly important. The time that you've invested, the time that you've spent making sure that they are heard, that they're included, working through the Byzantine process of their permits carefully, respectfully, diligently ensures that we have that runway for a long, long time for a good working relationship. I've seen the situation where organizations can get on the wrong side, kind of, you know, get off on the back foot with a, with a regulatory agency, and it's just so difficult to restore trust, to, um, you know, to restore open channels of communications and good faith, and um, I think our positive working relationship with those agencies is in no small part because of your work. Thank you. Yeah. I would also agree that having a great working relationship with the regulatory agencies is really how we make things happen legally and efficiently. And then when you have, you know, an open phone line, they see your number and they're not like, I'm not going to answer the phone. <laughs> you know, they actually pick up and talk to you. That's that's very really good. Helpful. Yeah, really <laughs> so. good. Really good. Thank you, and I also saw this in my own experience and, and professionally. If sometimes you're on their good side and they see an impending problem, they'll give you a heads up in advance. Yeah. And you'll find out before you would have otherwise. So it's a yeah. great way to prevent complications. So I think that's very useful. Um, <clears throat> I want to thank Stephanie for um, now having a project listing of additions to CIP and okay uh, financial report that's a good start on um, future okay feedback to um, board and community on what we're getting done and what the district is getting done so um, any other one quick thing I forgot in my report I will be asking uh, the board to consider changing the December twentieth board meeting. December 13th at our um, audit review. Mm -hmm. There's some conflicts um, on the 20th, and we'd like to move that meeting to the 13th, which would also be both the officers swearing in of, of new directors once the election is certified of, on December 6th. Mm -hmm. So I'd like you guys to keep that date open on um, December 13th. Okay. And I talked to Gene about asking to add it to the agenda tonight, but we felt it would be better to add it, to put it on the agenda uh, when it's time to meet the agenda deadline um, at the uh, audit. Right. That's a con uh, there's a couple of reasons, but one of the conflicts is with the uh, the JPA one meeting. And that, that the JPA it and moved its time and yeah. because yeah. of yeah. holidays. That night yeah. right. to travel. Right. So it would be good to make that change. Two benefits to that. 
trying to find the, the section in here, but we're talking about that really deep leak that was detected that was so large in the sandstone. I don't know, was that in, I'm yeah, guessing that's yeah, Zianti or... Yeah, um, I'm assuming this is the same leak detection technology that was used in previous passes. Correct. It's the same company. So mm -hmm. it wasn't that it existed before, it just... No, there was a leak there the last time they were here too. That okay. was repaired and fixed. Repair, in the okay. same area. Same area. Yeah. And then I put in also in the report that we did find 35 gallons a minute of leaks and an estimated uh, 50,000 gallons of water a day that we were losing. Yeah. And that was in the first round and we are in our second two weeks. Mm -hmm. And that wraps up tomorrow and okay. we'll have new numbers for that. And this report. And I don't re recall the figures from two or three years ago, but it was... It was significant. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. There's not many leaks we found. Yeah. These were all subsurface leaks? So all, uh, well, the majority. The majority. So I mean, so we wouldn't have found. Yeah, and that right. Zianti one sounded like it was really deep. And in, right, and in it was stone. coming out at the yeah. level of the creek, so yeah. nobody's down in the creek looking for water coming out of the bank of the creek. So <coughs> I think that's really remarkable that they were able to detect that, and so I, that's great. <laughs> and, and this is something that you do on a regular basis. This is an annual thing, or they're about every three right? years. Every three years. Yeah. That's what the state recommends is every three years. So we've been, we did it three years ago. We're doing it again. So that's the six million gallon leak in the Felton system. It's in the report. Yes. Yeah, uh, I thought it was a type. No, East Cyan. <laughs> you know, it's it's yeah. East Cyan. Ten sixty-five East Cyan. Where's that in my report? It's on page <laughs> page two sixty-one. Two sixty-one. Six million gallon leak. Oh well, that was an. Yes, that is that one. Mm -hmm. Yes. Wow. Sorry, I was drawing a blank right there. Yeah. They had it at 600 million at one point. That's a type. That's a type. Wow. So my, my numbers were yeah. confused right now. I figured there couldn't be more than one of those things. No. That was one. And that's, a, that's because we wow. assessed that that had been going since a pressure issue that we had on Wells Road during in April. And so we had to go back to that date to do the GPM on it, mm -hmm. and that's what it came up to. Yeah. I mean, that's like 20 acre feet or something in that order. That's quite a bit for a 14, 1500 acre feet a year. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's huge. Yeah. Okay. Leak detection is paid off to be a very positive. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, okay, in just a second. All right, absolutely. Any other board uh, comments on? Okay, and uh, I, I want to uh, take public input on both the department status reports and then uh, also on committee reports. So please, for the department status well, reports. I had a question for Stephanie. I noticed that there were four months of bills for the attorney, and I wondered why it took four months to get that paid. It wasn't four months to get it paid. That's when we received the bills. What was that? That was when we received the bills. We received After four months? Gina can speak probably more to that. There was a large bill in June uh -huh. that she took back to the partners to try and get it some of it written off to get the bill discounted, which delayed their future bills. But that's kind of a big hit. A hundred over a hundred hundred and nineteen thousand oh, dollars. We knew I mean we accrued I mean through the odd, you know, the year-end procedures, we recognize that you the accrued it. hadn't come in, so I mean that got accrued um, last month. My thing mentioned that we were waiting on a legal bill. You know, I put it in here again that you know all of these legal bills were going to be hitting in October. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, any other public input on the district report, our department status reports? Question um, on Gina's n November 9th memo about categories of legal services. There was a new category called election issues that piqued my curiosity. What what about election issues? Do we need legal advice on? Um, well, I, I can't please. speak to the specific communications that came to legal related to election issues because that would be privileged. But there were questions that came up in the course of the election. It was a pretty small item, but there were some, and I addressed them, and I created I was directing the, the question to the board. 
And like, they also not? Okay, I'm just curious. When we have that memo that talks about categories of legal services, I assume that means we can, since it's part of the, the public domain in the, in the, uh, the monthly meeting, yeah, I assume we could ask questions about it. So the question, no. the point is we can't ask questions about the legal memo? No. Okay. Well, Sorry. Um, no, I, I, you just to, you, I, I believe Chuck was trying to answer it by referring it to, to Gina. Yeah. And, and she answered. And she answered as... Uh, she answered. Okay. To the best that she can. So. And why do we have the memo? So. Okay. Anybody else want to comment on um, department status reports? Okay, don't see any. Um, committee reports. I, I attended a um, uh, technical advisory uh, meeting of the groundwater uh, agency on Tuesday. Um, a lot of people couldn't make it. That was the day of the 21 car pileup. Mm -hmm. So um, <laughs> our attendance was rather low. We had a couple of people. Um, uh, Jen and, and, and Rosemary from the city both called in, which was helpful, but we were down a few directors. But um, I think we made progress. We have a recommendation that's going to be um, presented to the full board at the next meeting. And um, the sooner we get going on that, the better. So hopefully uh, they will um, be able to have their questions answered about how we approach selection of a, a technical consultant and we can get started on the real meat of the uh, GSP. Okay. Groundwater Sustainability Plan. Groundwater <laughs> Sustainability Plan. Thank you. Okay. Um, anybody else? Um, on committee reports? Uh, Jean, did you want to do the Environmental Committee report or is oh. that up to me? Oh. To either way. Uh, yeah, I'll show back to where we were. Um, Yes, now, now I've skipped over it. Excuse me, I've got to find it now. Page 268. Thank you. It's just a blur now. I'm scanning so fast. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah we, we did have a number of interesting things. And that was, um, regrettably, that was the last time we saw Fred McPherson. He was a great stalwart attendee of, of the Environmental Committee. He was really committed to the a watershed um, plan of the district, and that was always his, one of his primary focuses. So we really miss his participation and his input, and um, we're going to really miss him otherwise, but especially in the environmental sector. Um, we did talk about, um, uh, in the new business, we talked about the climate change adaptation and mitigation plan, um, which is really important to the district. Um, this is something that's a real specialty item, and it's going to require um, certainly the services of a consultant to do this. Um, staff doesn't have the time um, to do that, but I do think, considering the makeup of our district, it's going to be something that's going to have to be a high priority. Um, and we talked about um, some other things, like the hydrological consultant and the changes that happened there. But I think it was a very useful meeting, and. Um, as I say, we're going to really miss um, Fred McPherson, so it was great to see him there, and um, he was always a real positive influence on the district. His video was so great, the last one. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was really good. Turkey, the turkey foot, turkey foot. Turkey foot. Mm -hmm. Everybody talks about it. It was the best one. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, he built his own video editing workstation. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, Bill, would you like to comment anything on the engineering committee meeting? Uh, the engineering committee meeting went well. Uh, we talked about Bear Creek Estates, and then Rick pretty much we talked about the whole in engineering uh, new position department yeah. for the water district. And, uh, so we should bring it to this meeting. And then uh, what else do um, we went over the Bear Creek Estates, and then we went over... Um, and as usual, uh, Rick brought an update on the capital. Okay. Capital uh, improvement. improvement plan. All the capital improvement upstairs. Yeah. <coughs> okay. Um, I'll um, the facilitation committee of the JPA met yesterday. Um, you should be starting to see um, some educational programs um, 
you know, like three major meetings uh, beginning in the uh, next year. Uh, the first one having to do with land use and the planning uh, for that and the interactions between um, the, the JPA and the, so the water agency and the, um, the land use agency. So the future ones are not as well, um, you know, have not had as much thought yet, but uh, that's part of the mandate of uh, the groundwater um, sustainability agency through Sigma is to have an educational process. So um, I think those will probably be at the Felton Hall coming in. Uh, there was some thought of having those in Mount Hermon, but they were not able to accommodate uh, uh, um, you know, um, you know, conflicts. Con and conflicts. Well, no, not so complex is that you need to actually kind of have to stay there and uh, oh. okay, sign up for uh, some uh, residency there for a few nights in order to use the facilities there. So, um, but you don't other, have to join their JPA or anything. <laughs> Um, so that's it for um, that I think for the JPA um, and is so I'll open it up to public for the comments on the committee reports anybody want to say anything Nancy? the scoping meeting for the Santa Cruz City water rights NOP was <coughs> fascinating and went by way too fast and um, I was promised that we would all be able to get to see the um, uh, what's it called? The slideshow. What's that called? PowerPoint. PowerPoint. Thank you. PowerPoint. That wasn't coming to my brain. So, um, uh, we want to make sure, yeah, slideshow. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> Giving my age away. Um, so, um, that will be very useful to look at that again, but I'm wondering, uh, is the environmental committee or is the district, uh, how involved are you? Did you comment on the NOP? Is there anything that you can tell us as far as your interaction about that? You know, what's what's the district's role? Mm -hmm. uh, well, I spoke with Chris Berry at the event. Mm -hmm. I also attended, and um, I we I, we briefly discussed what their water rights changes and how that would impact our water right on Fall Creek. Mm -hmm. And then we didn't set a date, but we have tentatively going to follow up about that. So I'll have more information at a later date. Okay, great. Yeah, because yeah, there's real concern about how much water is going to be diverted at Felton and the changes there, and what's going to happen to the river uh, flow below that, mm -hmm. um, and that setting an overall flow amount may not be uh, adequate you know, because of the changes in Raincon and, and, you know, it has multiple channels now and all that, you know, there are all these complexities that come up that are, this district is going to have to pay attention to because it's the river. Thank you. Anything, anybody else want to comment on uh, committee reports? Okay. Um, just one more thing. Of budget finance, <coughs> we saw the debt management policy <coughs> and just to remind people there is a special audit meeting on the 28th right so we'll be seeing that we saw that in the draft yeah I mean, we, draft. we had it was still hot from the printer when we saw it <laughs> and, and we'll have the addition of that to that of the uh the loan pro okay yeah. uh, possibility okay um that's it for district reports if nobody else has any uh, uh, director's uh, report i have a, oh, a couple okay. things i'd like to share okay um so at the end of october um the organization i work for hosted a forum in the city of santa rosa on energy resilience and public safety and uh, one of our district's own nate gillespie who's in operations here spoke on a panel for us about uh, the impact of the public safety power shutdown and the impacts to water districts and special districts in the events of, of those sorts of power interruptions where you're counting on power being reliable, um, it, it might not be. And what does that mean for communications? What does that mean for fire suppression if you're counting on water pressure? What does that mean for um, operations, internet, etc.? So. Uh, just wanted to thank and appreciate Nate Gillespie for his um, for his service there and um, 
it was great to have his input on the district's behalf. There were a lot of other um, organizations who valued his input, so thanks again for that. He, and he had a good time. He, he enjoyed it. In, in the context of, of that energy security, energy reliability, and community resilience, uh, the latest update on the impacts of the campfire is a fatality count so far of 63 and 631 missing. So I think it's really important that this area, which is also critically high risk fire, keep in mind how important a reliable water system is, how important communication systems are, how important it is for us to stay in touch with our residents and our customers in the event of, you know, if it's not a fire, it's going to be an earthquake. If it's not an earthquake, it's going to be a horrible winter storm. Um, being in touch with our residents and having them understand how, how we are embracing these risks and what we're planning to do to address them to make sure water stays on the best we can is, I think, a critically important thing that we can do as a service for, for our residents. Um, related to um, the last environmental committee meeting, uh, also in part wearing my, 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 my day job hat, <laughs> on December 10th, we're going to be co-hosting and facilitating a presentation of the fourth uh, climate impact assessment. It's going to be hosted at, the, the venue is at UC Santa Cruz alumni facility. Uh, it's from 10 until 4 p.m. It's a description of the state's assessment of climate change impacts at as downscaled, uh, you know, as critically local scale as possible. So I'll make sure that, Nancy, you have flyers for the um, upcoming, for, for Saturday, so if it's Please. appropriate to have those handed out Absolutely. there. Absolutely. Um, and I would encourage, yeah, and I'll, I'll reach out to other folks in the network. This is a great opportunity to, to be informed about the latest scientific research on just what are we understanding about temperature increase, precipitation changes, um, and, and other ways in which climate change is impacting us locally. Well, Mark, is it possible to post that on the district website? Oh, that absolutely, absolutely. So if, 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 yeah, if that's okay with the district, it's you know, but yeah, so it's, it's like a coming. December tenth. December tenth. Yeah, December tenth. So absolutely, and again, hosted at uh, the UCSC alumni facility, and yes. flyers can go out, and I'll, I'll, there, I'll there is a registration share it around. For it. Time so. of day. Mm -hmm. Time of day. Ten until Ten four. Ten it's the most of the day thing. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'll be there Should with be pretty sure okay. the hostess with the masters. Cool. That was it. Okay. Um, any uh, future board of directors agenda items? Anybody want to speak up for having something agendized for the next meeting? I don't see any. Um, and then back to the public. Anything on the committee reports and director reports. Okay. Um, so we'll close out district reports. Um, there are written communications uh, from two people in the packet and informational material of two items. And hope people can take note of those. And otherwise, we're going to get uh, to the meeting and adjourn slightly before 9 o'clock. So thank you, everybody, for sticking it. Uh, out until this hour. Good night.